Hi, I'm Ellen Kodiff, Editor-in-Chief of Food Channel Pro. We're continuing our video series, Leaders with Guts, with Sally Smith of Buffalo Wild Wings. Sally, how has Buffalo Wild Wings changed since you joined the company in 1994? Well, how much time did you say we had today <laughs> together? Um, boy, that how has it changed? Um, I think it would probably be easier to answer how it hasn't changed. Um, we're still serving wings and beer and celebrating sports. Um, and that's probably the thing that's carried through since 1994. When I joined uh, late that year, we had about 30 restaurants. Uh, we were mainly a college bar. Uh, you ordered at the counter. We called your name over a microphone. It was kind of muffled. And uh, today we have about 680 restaurants in 43 states. Um, we have a more traditional type of service, although we still have the counter. So if you're in a hurry, you can place your order at the counter. I think we've broadened our menu since then. Um, and we appeal to a very wide uh, audience uh, today. Uh, from a college campus standpoint, we're probably only on about 20 or 30 college campuses, and the rest would be either downtown locations, um, suburban locations. Um, we've, been, we've been able to grow our customer base uh, while we grew the company. Can you talk a little bit about two days, um, Super Bowl Sunday, what that means to Buffalo Wild Wings, and another, traditionally the busiest restaurant day is Mother's Day. Can you talk about those two days in, at Buffalo Wild Wings? Sure, well, super, we love Super Bowl. We love football season, period. Um, if they could have football year round, it would be great for us. Uh, but Super Bowl Sunday, um, our restaurants start getting ready about three weeks ahead of time. They take a, it's our, it's one of our, it's our largest carryout day. Uh, we sell more than probably this past year, I think it was something like nine and a half million uh, wings in our 600, that's a lot of wings. Um, so our restaurants have to get ready. They start taking orders for carry out um, and they have to schedule people. Of course, an hour before the game is about the time when most people wanna come in and get their wings and they work it backward. We also, they know enough to keep enough time uh, or enough space for people that are gonna enjoy the game at Buffalo Wild Wings. So we would call it the best seat in the house. Mother's Day, probably isn't our most popular day. However, um, if the kids are picking where they're gonna take their mother for dinner, they'll probably select Buffalo Wild <laughs> Wings. Um, from us, uh, obviously, Mother's Day, you know, we wanna make sure that if, if people are coming in, we're giving those mothers just an absolute great experience. Our busiest day besides Super Bowl happens to be the first couple of days of March Madness. How does it work in terms of college football versus the pros in terms of business for Buffalo Wild Wings? You know, it's really interest, interesting. Um, college football, what, what we are able to do during that season, typically on Saturdays, is um, we'll find that we have certainly have people that are supporting any local teams, but let's say we're in, a, in an area where there are no Buffalo, or are no college teams, we'll connect with alumni groups in the area and invite mm -hmm. them to come in and we make sure that we're showing the game. With all of the large screen TVs that we have, um, we can almost guarantee that, and, and all of the programming that we subscribe to, we can almost guarantee that we'll show your game. Um, whatever college uh, it is, even if it's a cross country, let's say you're living in California, you went to school in the East, we'll make sure that Eastern football game is on. From a pro football standpoint, um, you know that it, it's a it's about the same season, um, but we will get will it drives business on Thursday nights. It drives business on Sunday, and then again on Monday night. So um, football is big for us September mm -hmm. through uh, through uh, uh, Super Bowl. At Buffalo Wild Wings, you take the recruitment process very seriously for your GMs. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, you know, it was it was a practice that I'd read about through, not even in the restaurant industry. Uh, I was reading an interview by a, uh, a well-known CEO of a very large retailer, and the article described, he, he talked about the importance of people and how at their organization they interviewed four levels down. 
And I thought, my gosh, if they can interview four levels down, we should certainly be able to. So I worked with um, Judy Shulak, our head of operations, and I said, you know, let's think about bringing in every general manager candidate. Um, whether they're uh, an internal promotion or they're an external hire from, you know, obviously the outside. Um, a couple things. We bring them into Minneapolis. Uh, they go through uh, a number of uh, interviews individually with um, leadership team members as well as a panel interview. I think it does a couple of things. One, it sends the message uh, to the person how, how important that general manager position is. And I do think it is probably the most important uh, position in the company. Uh, second, let's say you are a, you're an, an existing uh, assistant general manager at Buffalo Wild Wings and it's your goal to become a general manager. You come in and maybe you're, you know, a lot of times we have several people coming in at the same time, not for the same position, but let's say either the location that they're going to go to work for uh, or that they'll be working in needs a different set of skills than they have. So it's an opportunity for us to sit down with that, that current team member and say, you know what, this one's not going to work for you, but we have another opening coming up in the next three months or six months. Here's what we're going to do to get you ready. Um, it, I think it stresses the importance. It says, hey, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't just forget about you. We didn't not even consider you for the position, but rather it, and, it, and, it, it, and that process has really driven down uh, general manager and assistant manager turnover. It's been a great, mm -hmm. and it's a learning experience for us. You can't, they love talking about their restaurants. And so you can ask them very open-ended questions. What would you do differently? What's your biggest uh, challenge? What do you think you do really well? And they bring a lot of ideas that we can use throughout the system. What, what is your turnover rate? You know, our general manager turnover late rate is currently less than 10%. Wow. And our entire, for all of our managers, that includes our general managers, assistant general managers, and, our, and I think we typically have about three managers, additional three managers per restaurant, is under 30%. You've said in the past that carpet time is really important to mm -hmm. your operation. Now, you're in 43 states. How do you keep carpet time alive and well? and still maintain any kind of semblance of balance in your life? <laughs> well, you know, I have a great leadership team. And so while they like to see me in the restaurants, they also like to spend time with the other leadership team members. A lot of times I'll try to travel with um, Judy from operations or Kathy in marketing. It allows us to have that travel time together to catch up as well mm -hmm. as time in the restaurant. Um, and I combine it with other roles that I have. So I, if I'm going to visit, um, perhaps look at a new restaurant location, a, a possible site, I'll make sure I get into the restaurants in that area. Or if I'm going to give a talk to an industry group, um, again, I'll combine that with travel to the restaurants. Basically, your makeup is two-thirds franchisees and one-third company-owned. Are those company-owned stores spread out, or are they in one area in particular, or are they sort of spread out the same, concentrically the same way that the other units are? Well, luckily, we've, we've in our developing process, we try to look at a market. And our goal when we enter a market, um, be it a franchise or company, but particularly a company, since that's what you asked about, um, is to uh, how quickly can we penetrate the market, or at least get uh, to somewhere between three and five units, because then you can have a regional manager there. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're very deliberate about where we where we go. Now we're in a number of markets on the company side. We have, I think, about 225 company restaurants. And, um, mm -hmm. and so what we'll do is um, try to cluster those and we'll try to backfill throughout that, that uh, throughout a three to five year period before we start moving into another market. How would you describe the demographics of your customer base and does that change or vary by geography at all? Well, that that is truly the, the mystery of Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, we have an incredibly broad appeal, and I get asked that question. I've been asked that question now for 15 years, and it's evolved over time. Mm -hmm. But I think it, we look at it, it, it varies by the time of day, it varies by the day of the week, and it varies by the, the time of the year. So who's in there in, in September on a Saturday is gonna look a lot different than, the, than who's in there for dinner in July. So we'll have young families coming in for that early dinner day part. We'll have um, later, you know, 
younger, you know, single, newly married, coming in later in the evening. Uh, we host a lot of local sports teams in the summer. So you're traveling with your kids, local soccer team. You know, the good news is you made the traveling team. The bad news is you made the traveling team. And so we'll find we get whole teams that come in. Um, that's mm. certainly different than, as I said, a Monday night football. Your background is in accounting. How has that helped you with Buffalo Wild Wings? And also, you might as well make a comment about the stereotype of accountants. You don't fit that. And do you think that's a fair stereotype, which I'm sure you're aware of what it is? <laughs> well, yes, that, they're, that they wear uh, a green shade and a carry pencil in their <laughs> pocket, I think, is the stereotype. But, you know, my background is in accounting and finance. And, I, and al although I would say that happened so early in my career, um, I have a lot of experience in manufacturing and franchising and in retail sales in a whole different industry. Um, I am not the typical accountant, and I would say that uh, the typical stereotypical accountant, and I think accounting has changed a lot. What it's done is it's allowed me to understand a lot of, um, of how it all works, of what has to happen um, and how you can affect the results in the restaurant, um, the importance of of setting goals. I mean, I think that's one of the things that accounting has done. Um, I, we set the goal a long time ago of being a thousand restaurants by the end of 2013. We said that in 2003 when we had 200 restaurants. And we will come pretty darn close to achieving that. You can't just let that happen, you have to have a plan. And that financial background has, has really helped me, at least, um, have a plan. The other thing that it's done is, I, as you mentioned, we have uh, about two-thirds of our system are franchise, so about 450 restaurants. So I understand what, it, what those franchisees, when they talk about costs going up, when they talk about labor or the price of chicken wings, I know what it does to their bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so they know that I'm, I'm all about having a strong company and a strong parent company. And uh, it's been a great uh, experience and background for me. We've been talking with Sally Smith of Buffalo Wild Wings and the Vice Chairman of the National Restaurant Association. Check out the next part of this series as we explore what it takes to be a leader with guts. For Food Channel Pro, I'm Ellen Kodiff. <laughs>